Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, The Unported Playlist, where we take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time. And today we're taking a look at Alpine Racer 2. And there is definitely a reason why this game has not been ported to home consoles. And if you've ever seen a cabinet for this in the arcades, you will know why. It was a gigantic step-on cabinet where you could move two flow skis left and right to be able to turn. You had handlebars in front of you and it emulated the skiing process as well as an arcade game could. And here's a little bit of a background. You know, I don't talk about myself too much on the channel, but before I was a filmmaker, I was a professional skier. And then for many years, I made ski documentaries before I went into more mainstream film. And then many years later, decided to do this channel. But I have always loved skiing. I've skied on every continent that has snow outside of Antarctica. And I used to be on the road about 300 days a year working in skiing, being at things like X Games, the US Free Skiing Open, things like that. So am I partial to this game? Of course I am. I love skiing. But it was just an awesome arcade experience, and it's something that you're really never going to collect for your home as an arcade cabinet unless you are a deep-pocketed millionaire with more space than you know what to do with, because this cabinet was absolutely massive. It had a huge screen. It had the entire faux ski simulator installed in front of it. It's not something that you're going to be playing with a joystick in a random arcade cabinet. But via emulation and MAME, you can experience it, and it works perfectly great. Now granted, it's not the deepest game because a lot of the hook from it came from having that giant cabinet in front of you. And I will put a photo up right now after the backflip. There you go, you see what it looked like. It was just a crazy thing. And that's what was so great about arcades back then and even now. They brought you experiences that you just didn't get to have at home. Now, could this possibly work on something like the Wii balance board and then be emulated? It totally could. I could definitely see a way that this could have been brought home many years later, but honestly, why would anyone port a skiing simulator game from Namco to the Wii that many years later with the balance board? Just because something is theoretically possible doesn't mean it's worth the time, energy, effort, or money to actually do it. But that is why emulation is so important and so great because without emulation, I haven't seen a cabinet for this in a very, very long time, probably the early 2000s. So without being able to emulate it and play it at home, it might be something that you never actually get to play and experience. And it's something that if you want to spend 10 or 15 minutes pretending you're skiing, I definitely recommend it because you get a lot of snowboard games and you still, you still do get those, but skiing is definitely something that really isn't featured in gaming that much and it's unfortunate because it is my favorite thing in the world to do outside making ridiculous videos for YouTube. And you will see here that I'm going to finish in fifth place. The game definitely has a lot of challenge to it, even with a controller. And you have three different types of skiers that have three different types of controls. And while they don't say easy, medium, and hard, I would say that the freestyle skier is the easy mode. The racing skier is probably medium and the mogul skier is going to be the difficult mode. And you have two different types of racing. You have gate racing and you have freestyle racing and you have two mountains. So there is enough in the game to be able to make you be entertained. But I will say if you jumped out of a helicopter and landed on flat snow, you would blow your ACL and MCL very quickly. And I have blown both my ACLs. So trust me, it's not something you want to do. It's not a fun time. Don't jump out of helicopters onto flat earth. It's going to hurt. Although I have been in many helicopters before, skiing and shooting, so it's something, if you ever get the chance to do it, I highly recommend it. And it's kind of fun to talk about my background because I'm the voice and sometimes the face behind the channel, but really, how much do you know about me? But I've kind of gotten off track. We should be talking about Alpine Racer too. It's just fun, and I loved the cabinet. I love those kind of like joyous experiences in arcades where you just have this massive thing in front of you, something that you would never expect to see at home, and you get to enjoy an experience that's unlike anything else you've probably ever done before. And emulating the game, you definitely lose that gigantic ski control system, but it works great on an Xbox One controller, and it's a lot of fun to play. I mean, graphically, it has a really great look to it. You know, the GPU on this, that weird Evans and Sutherland that I mentioned before in Dirt Dash, it has a great fog effect, and it's not hiding draw distance. It's giving you a little bit like of a volumetric atmospheric effect to it. And you will see I do bounce into things here because you do really need to initiate your turns early because the speed you're carrying, there is only so far your skier can turn with carrying that forward momentum. And I will say that it actually does a really good job of emulating actual skiing because if you're carrying too much speed downhill and you try to turn too sharply, you're not going to be able to finish your turn. And I hope you don't bounce into a rock wall. I think you'd have a lot more damage than you do in this game here, like a broken leg. But it's definitely not something that you want to do. And the game does a really good job showing you that aspect of skiing. 
But I also love the soundtrack, so I'm going to stop talking right now, watch a little bit of the game, and we'll come back and close it out quickly because this is a shorter episode than most because the game's not that long. But enjoy, and I'll be right back. And that was a really quick break because I realized I was getting really close to the end of that race. But now coming up here, we're going to take the mogul skier and we're going to go on to the gate mountain because you have two different choices, gate racing or freestyle racing, and you have two different courses. And as opposed to competing against other opponents to try to get first place in the gate races, it is traditionally like a super G or a downhill where you have your gates and you need to go through each and every one of them. And each gate you go through adds a second to your time limit. Now I will say, having done Super G and Downhill when I was in high school, that's not how it works. You don't want time added, you want time subtracted. And if you missed even a single gate, you're DNF or did not finish and you're done for the day. And using a mogul skier for this is a very bad choice because you'll see I've already missed a gate. But it does give you a second play style that you can enjoy. It's not as much fun as the racing, but it's definitely challenging and it gives you just a little bit of extra depth to playing the game. And like I said, there's a huge component of this missing with not having the gigantic stand-on ski controls that are attached to the arcade cabinet. But like I mentioned, you cannot experience this game any way else. These cabinets broke all the time because the sad part about arcade hardware is it takes a beating. Control sticks, buttons, light guns, wheels, pedals, giant ski controllers. They're treated like garbage because they're amusements and they break. And if the game breaks when it's not making that much money, you're just never going to really see it again. So that's why things like being able to emulate them are amazing and I highly recommend it because otherwise these experiences just totally disappear and you'll never see them again. Maybe you'll see a video, maybe you'll see a photo, but without emulation, you're not going to be able to experience the game. And that to me is the biggest travesty of, you know, retro arcade games is that sometimes you just can't play them without the original hardware or the emulation's too poor to be able to enjoy it. So definitely go out and play Alpine Racer 2. It's fun for 10-15 minutes and that's a great thing. Short of that, we really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe. It takes us a lot of time and energy to make each and every one of these. And hit that notification bell so you know when the next episode is going to be out. But we will have episodes on Tuesday and Friday in our other series. And we will be back on Sunday with an episode in the Unported Arcade Playlist. Short of that, we got 34 of 43 gates. And if this was a real race, we would have stopped about halfway up the mountain and just walked down because we would have been done. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.